Hello and welcome to our screencast on setting up Ethereum. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, one way that uh, is a good way to hold keys and keep them secure and still give us the capabilities that we need to interact with the Ethereum network. So it's going to be more than just a wallet. We're actually going to um, create a platform here. So in this video I'm going to show you how to how, wh what this platform is, how we created it, we're going to um, identify the different pieces of software, the prerequisites that run on it that we need. Uh, we're going to run the actual Ethereum client and we're going to show you how to create backup and use the wallet features. Uh, today we are not going to show how to actually call into smart contracts, although that will be coming up in a, in a future video. So to get started, this is our platform. It's a Raspberry Pi 3. It, uh, we like the one that comes from this online retailer. You can buy them anywhere, but uh, we like Adafruit because they accept Bitcoin and they have really good service. So we're going to have this um, single board computer. It's about the size of a credit card. It's a, a PC that runs Linux. It's got a high def video output, Ethernet, USB, all this kind of stuff. But for the sake of Okay, with, by the time you buy a power supply and an SD card and a case, you know, you're looking at closer to 100 bucks. But still, for under $100, you've got a separate computer that uh, not only is going to store your keys privately and securely, but um, is also going to give you the, um, the flexibility to call smart contracts. And we like this platform because it's so small. I mean, this is, this is only the size of a credit card. You can put it in your shirt pocket. You can carry it with you anywhere in the world on travel. Um, it's small enough that it'll fit in a safety deposit box, so you can you can take all your worldly wealth, convert it to Ethereum, and store your keys on something like this, and put it in a safety deposit box somewhere, and not worry about it. Uh, so that's that's kind of why we like it: portability, security, privacy. The security comes from we're going to get the board directly from the retailer. We're going to install the operating system ourselves on a separate SD card that we buy, you know, not from the same retailer. Um, and then we're just going to install Linux uh, without any of the bells and whistles. We don't want any bloatware or spyware. Uh, it doesn't need to run a web server. It doesn't run, need to run email or anything like that. It's just going to be an Ethereum platform. Okay, let's talk software. First thing we're going to install Google's Go language. Go is like the latest and greatest language. Then Google's behind it, and and other tools that we're going to install or depend on it. So. Um, it's pretty easy, just get it off the web, download a file, extract an archive, right? change your path variable, and you've got Go. Once you've got that set up, the tool we're going to install on top of it is Geth, Go Ethereum. This is the standard tool that everybody in the world knows how to use. Um, it gives us full visibility and control. It doesn't like hide our private key from us. It doesn't stop us from doing anything. It's um, it's uh, pretty much the best the best way to interact with Ethereum. Now the bad news though is that there, the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a geth built for it so we're gonna have to do that ourselves. The good news is that's really easy. You just acquire the software from GitHub which is the well-known source for such things. Um, Git clone copies the software from GitHub, installs it locally. Then there's an install here, um, some Golang stuff. And then once that's done, CD go Ethereum, make geth, and it takes a few minutes, but it's pretty easy. Okay, so what you have when you get all that done, we've got the Raspberry Pi all set up, we've got the tools set up on it. I've just run geth version, and it's showing us over 167, go 1.7. There's a 1.8 out already that uh, you should get. Uh, okay, and that's where it's installed. Now, if you just run geth, it's going to try and download the entire Ethereum blockchain, and that's bigger than the hard disk space we've got on this small board computer. So um, don't just run geth, run geth lite. What that'll do is it'll connect into the same Ethereum network and get all the same information, but it's not going to try and store all those blocks locally. It's just lite. All right, and we'll let that, uh, that's hooking up to the, you know, joining the peer to peer network and doing all that stuff. Um, let's go build bin, which is where 
get built to. There it is. So we ran geth in the other terminal, and it's operating essentially like a daemon. And it's got an RPC interface that it's listening on for the client side. So to run the client side, we run, get, we run the same program, only this time we say attach. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to attach to whichever other geth it finds running on localhost. Great. Now when you just installed geth, there shouldn't be any accounts defined yet. Before I get before I run this, um, we're talking JavaScript at the moment, so everything we everything we type is going to be interpreted as a JavaScript command by the um, geth tool. So ETH is a global object. Accounts is the accounts, and that's an array that is so far empty because we haven't defined any accounts yet. So we're going to do that now. Um, by the way, if you run geth and there are already accounts in there, delete them. And I'm going to show you where the key store is next. Okay, so also built in, there's this magic object called personal. And we're going to create a new account. Now we have to give it a passphrase. And this passphrase is going to be a, um, a key that's used to encrypt our private key. So this, this will be used as a symmetric key. Uh, let's pick... Uh, just some random random phrase that I just made up. And what this is doing is doing the cryptography to calculate the key. It's going to come back and tell us the public address for the key. And this is the public address. We can send this to anybody in the world to pay us. Uh, we can list this on our business card. We can put it on a website. Um, anybody who sends to this account, the ether is going to end up in, in, in our account. So. That's great, that's how we get paid. Now let's take a look at where that is. Where the file is. Um, when you install geth on Linux, it creates a Ethereum subdirectory under the home directory. If you're running this on Windows, it's going to create it under app data. Uh, either way, there's this Ethereum subdirectory and then there's a subdirectory called key store. Now this is a file containing the private key that we just created the account for and it's encrypted with this passphrase so what this means is if we back up this file and we back up this passphrase right then we can restore this file into any other version of geth and it'll ask us this passphrase and we'll be able to restore it from empty so uh, do yourself a favor make sure that you define an account that you back it up that you remove this remove all these files and uh, pretend that you've got a brand new install and make sure that you can restore that account properly before you um, send or receive any ether. Okay, that's the public service announcement. Um, let's go back. Get the attach. Okay, so now we know how to create an account. We know how to get paid and we know how to um, back it up and all that kind of stuff. Now, how would, how would you want to look at the um, uh, balance of the account? Well, uh, f.getBalance. So f is that same object as before. There's a function called getBalance, and it takes what account we want as an argument. So rather than copy and paste that big ugly number, I'm just going to say get the balance for whatever is accounts zero. And the answer comes back, and the answer is zero, but what it doesn't tell you is that it's in units of way, and there that's W-E-I, and there are 10 to the 18 way in one ether. So at the current value, that makes uh, ether's resolution down to something like femtosense, which is absolutely amazing level of resolution. Um, now, people aren't necessarily used to working at that level. I, I don't want to see the balance of my Ethereum account in way. So um, fortunately, there's a built-in way to uh -huh, convert from way. Whoops, get balance. Dot accounts zero. Zero. Well, zero away is zero ether, zero ether is zero away. But anyway, you see how to get the balance in way and how to get the balance in Ethereum. 
great. Um, so the next thing we want to know is how do we send money? So let's say we have to send Ethereum to somebody. Well, they have to tell us their address so that we know who to send, what account to send to. And here's the command. We're going to do a send transaction. And it has to go from a sender. So it's the, uh, we can pick the account we're going to send from. In this case, we only have one. So we're going to send from the one we just created. You can also put the 0x, this big ugly number. You can put that in there too if you want, or as an alternative if you want. Um, this is easier. So from that account to, and now we need our receiver. Uh, so this is whoever we're paying is going to tell us this number. And I'll just copy and paste that from another window. Okay, that's who it's going to go to. Now, how much ether are we going to send? Well, remember this is in way, so if we want to send one ether, that's one ether in way at 18 zeros. That's what it looks like to send one ether through this command line interface. And it's going to fail because we don't have an ether. And it's also, OK, it says unlock required. By default, when you hook into Ethereum like this, your account is locked. It'll prevent you from sending any ether, which is a safety device. Um, so to unlock, it's a personal dot unlock account. We have to tell it which account. And we have to give it that passphrase because in order to unlock the account, it needs access to the private key. And it can't, even Guth can't access that private key unless it has this passphrase that we just created. This is kind of a security problem. Um, everything that you do in the shell is stored in a history file. So just be aware that um, there are other ways to unlock which are a little bit more secure, but this one is. This one is easier for the sake of making the video, and it does the job. So that'll take a second. It'll come back, and it'll say true when it is finally unlocked. Any second now. And now if we send transact, it's still going to fail because we don't have an ether in there, but it's, it's, um, it's not going to fail because the account is locked. It's going to fail because there's insufficient funds. OK, so that's everything you need to know to operate with this thing as a wallet. You know how to uh, create the accounts. You know how to create keys, back up those keys. You know how to get paid. You know how to pay. Uh, it works as a wallet, and that's, you know, that's going to be great. But what we haven't shown you is how to call um, smart contracts. And that'll be a topic for a future video. But basically, it's just going to be a matter of writing some scripts and then passing those scripts to this Ethereum instance, which will do the right thing on the blockchain, and we're done. So that's enough for now. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, look forward to meeting you in a future video.